Well, good evening. Welcome to our Wednesday evening broadcast, I guess we can call it, but we're happy to be with you folks tonight. And we're going to get started with a couple of songs. The first one is going to be, What a Day That Will Be. You should see the lyric on your screens, and I encourage you uh, to sing out loud with us in your home, worship the Lord in song together, What a Day That Will Be. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and I look upon his face the one who saved me by his grace when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land what a day glorious day that will be there'll be no sorrow there no more burdens to bear no more sickness no pain no more parting over there and forever i will be with the one who died for me what a day glorious day that will be what a day that will be when my jesus i shall see and i look upon his face the one who saved me by his grace when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land what a day glorious day that will be amen i'm looking forward to that day how about you it will be a glorious day when we're together with the Lord. All right, let's sing another one, 170. You're together with the Lord if you've been saved by the blood of the crucified one. Hymn number 170, if you happen to have the hymn book at home. And also the lyrics will be on the screen for you. Sing it out nice and loud with us from your home, saved by the blood of the crucified one. By the blood of the crucified one, now ransomed from sin and a new work begun. Sing praise to the Father and praise to the Son. Say by the blood of the crucified one. Say and sing, say and sing. My sins are all pardoned, my guilt is all gone. Glory I'm saved, glory I'm saved. I'm saved by the blood of the crucified one. Saved by the blood of the crucified one. The angels rejoicing because it is done. A child of the Father, join heir with the Son. Saved by the blood of the crucified one. Say and save, say and save. My sins are all pardoned, my guilt is all gone. Glory, I'm saved, glory, I'm saved, I'm saved by the blood of the crucified one. Saved by the blood of the crucified one, the Father he spake and his will it was done. Great price of my pardon, his own precious son. Saved by the blood of the crucified one. Glory and saved, saved, saved. My 
sins are all pardoned, my guilt is all gone. Sorry, I'm saved. I'm saved by the blood of the crucified one. Saved by the blood of the crucified one. All hail to the Father, all hail to the Son, all hail to the Son, all hail to the Spirit, the great three in one, saved by the blood of the crucified one. wonderful song and wonderful truth and to praise the Lord for the great salvation that we have uh, through faith in Jesus Christ. Well, let's take a few moments tonight as uh, is our custom to do and uh, hear from some missionaries and uh, see how they're doing. I have one that I'm going to read to you from my phone here. Wasn't able to print it. This is a message we received today uh, from uh, the Harmon family serving the Lord in Tanzania. And uh, they wrote and say, I pray that you and your church are doing well during this hard time our world is facing. I don't have much by way of a video prepared, but I can send a written update. Tanzania is a strange place right now. Obviously, the entire world is crazy, but Tanzania is not going in the same direction as the rest of the world. I was sad last month when the boarding school I teach the Bible at was closed down and all my students sent home. That choice followed the norm of every other country. The odd part, uh, the odd part came, there is a push for businesses to keep going to stop the economic downturn. It is also said by many that we should all go to church or the mosque and that we would be safe there. Some say if you take communion at church, COVID-19 would be turned away by the blood of Christ. Uh, I have personally been told by more than one local that people here think this is a white, people per, a white person problem, and it won't affect them. These are common beliefs among locals. As much as we want our church to be together, the health of our people is already feeble. I'm praying that God would spare our people from the de devastating effects that this virus would have in conjunction with HIV, malaria, malnourishment, and many other illnesses. My wife and I are still helping Andrew and his family with growing closer to God and gaining freedom from addiction. Uh, we live in times... Oh, let me go back. But, but we have begun to limit how much exposure we have to others. We live in times that are full of hard discussions and decisions, and we ask that you would pray for our health and wisdom in our daily lives. Your fellow servants, uh, Thomas and Kelly Harmon. So let's pray for the Harmons as they are faced with uh, a culture that uh, is a little different, and uh, they have some challenging decisions in leadership uh, that they have to make. All right, I mentioned to you this morning that the uh, Dinsmores uh, over in Labrador um, Amanda, uh, on uh, this month, I don't know when, but sometime this past month, had a miscarriage. And uh, she's taken it pretty hard. And God is giving grace and understanding, but I can tell she's hurting. This is Darren writing. It's been a big lesson for us over the last several years that life and ministry can hurt, but God is still good. He gives peace that passes understanding and strength to press on. This year, we've made great efforts to slow down and produce more quality in ministry and family life instead of just speed and volume. Perhaps at this current time, we're all reflecting on how we can produce more quality than quantity. We have a, little, a great little group here that we continue to work with, disciple, edify, and encourage. 
With a focus on social media ministry as of late, I really want to do more with it to reach the communities in Labrador that have no church. Please pray for our success in this area. So pray for Amanda, pray for our people, pray for our boys, and pray for me to have boldness, clarity, and zeal to reach all of Labrador with the gospel. I feel extra blessed lately from all of you that support us financially and prayerfully. An added blessing is that we have one new church decide to support the ministry here and another that's in the decision process. Praise the Lord. It's been a tremendous blessing to have more churches join our mission support team. The friendship and accountability are a huge blessing. Thank you all, Darren Dinsmore. Uh, so that's here in Canada. And let's continue to pray faithfully for the Dinsmores. And then uh, this note uh, is um, a little different. We don't support uh, Greg uh, Little uh, because we were supporting uh, the uh, Bartley family who served the Lord in St. Lucia and the Little served the Lord there uh, in a town called McCood and they have McCood Baptist Church. But I'll just tell you briefly that uh, because of what's going on there, uh, after prayerful consideration and counsel with their pastor, they made a difficult decision to come home uh, to Nova Scotia, Canada for a month or at least until international borders are open again. Uh, we have peace in knowing this was the Lord's leading. So they are now back in uh, Nova Scotia and are uh, standing in awe for all the ways that God has ordered their steps over the past week of decisions they did not expect they would have to make. As most of you are, we're continuing to utilize social media and the internet to continue encouraging and helping our folks at McCood Baptist Church through this time. The timeline in this is out of our control, but we continue to play for, pray for God's leading. Our heart's desire is to be back in St. Lucia as soon as the Lord leads and allows us to go home. Please continue to pray for us, for the people of McCood Baptist Church, and for St. Lucia through this difficult time. We are confident that even though things are outside our control, they're still in God's control, and He will glorify Himself through this time. Thank you for your prayers on our behalf, Greg Little. So pray for the Little family and pray for McCood Baptist Church. Now, I only have one more letter, but it was rather lengthy. The um, Malazos serve the Lord in Sagada, uh, the mountain province in the Philippines, and they generally don't write real often, but they write a lengthy letter full of news and uh, pictures. And uh, so I, I think you'll be able to see a few pictures tonight, but um, uh, he just starts off, of course, by mentioning, as does everybody, the current global pandemic. And uh, he said that as per current statistics, the Philippines report uh, 1,418 confirmed cases and 71 deaths. The number of cases is suspected to rise as test kits become more available locally. The Philippines is currently under heavy surveillance as the government tries to control the spread. Uh, everyone rich and poor, young and old, is affected. Currently, our immediate areas in a lockdown are what they refer to as an enhanced community quarantine. This basically means we have to observe curfew. We must be home from 2 p.m. until 8 a.m. And only one member of our family is allowed to go out for essential needs, such as groceries or emergency medical supplies. The borders of our town and province are barricaded with military personnel standing guard to make sure no one exits or enters the town or province until the lockdown is repealed. We praise the Lord that some food suppliers are still allowed to enter. Uh, the availability of food and groceries here runs low often even in normal times because of how far away we are from the big cities. So like most churches, we've had to adjust uh, our services, our gatherings. Um, Sagada is not as developed technologically as other places in the Philippines. We do have access to internet, but it's more often than not slow and unreliable. Services via live stream or other social media platforms are not a viable option. What we do have is a community radio station. And we already have a radio ministry through them called Truth For Today. Over the last two weeks, we've been broadcasting our services through the radio station. And last week, for the first time, we broadcast a children's program in place of our Sunday school ministry. Sandra and the kids all participated and had a great time. 
Uh, the radio has a wide range reaching other provinces around Mountain Province, for which we're thankful. And we're praying that lives even outside our church are being touched by God's Word through this ministry. On March 16th, our president declared a lockdown in the entire Luzon area, the largest and most populated area in the Philippines. Well, that meant the imposition of travel restrictions. In the days immediately following the lockdown, the president ordered the airport closed to all international travel. And that left many visitors and tourists scrambling uh, to get out of the country by March the 20th. Well, all of that affected our anniversary celebrations that were scheduled for the following week. We were supposed to have many visitors coming from Canada, but they had to make it out of the country before the total lockdown. This obviously was a great disappointment to us and to our visitors as months of preparation had been made both by us and them to, uh, for the special event. The visitors were family and very close friends, including my parents and Pastor and Mrs. Connor that have impacted my life and ministry in unspeakable ways. However, we're thankful to the Lord that they all made it safely home to Canada. We felt badly that they made the investment of time and finances only to have to be turned back. We do not understand completely, but we're confident that God has it under control. Uh, so then he just mentions being thankful and trusting the Lord, and he's been preaching a series of messages by faith. And then he starts sharing some testimonies. Um, we asked for prayer on on. Uh, on behalf of some of our folks, to see their loved ones accept Christ as Savior, thank you for praying. We've seen the Lord answer. Hilaria's husband, Tyrone, has accepted Christ as his Savior. Hilaria accepted Christ late last year and has had a great burden for the salvation of her family. Her greatest prayer was answered when her husband finally got saved. Please pray for this young couple. They have been very faithful to church and are eager to grow. A young man... Guy Guy is the 13-year-old son of Jane. Jane accepted Christ last year and has been praying for her son. Guy Guy dropped out of school because of bullying by both teachers and students. He's been in many different schools, but eventually when the bullying starts, he loses interest and eventually drops out. Uh, Guy Guy's background is really heartbreaking, but his situation is not uncommon. There are many other young people in our community who have dropped out of school for similar reasons. Jane had become very desperate because nothing was helping her son. She had tried countless remedies only to be disappointed time and time again. We encouraged her that the only thing that can help change her son is the life-changing gospel. Over the last few months, we prayed alongside her. Last month, Guy Guy became God's child. Jane tells us there's a great change in his overall attitude and character already. He has been faithful to every single church service and even comes on Saturday for cleanup and preparation of the building for Sunday. I believe that God will use this young man someday. He's infamous in our community as a dropout and a troublemaker. Now, when anyone sees him walking through town, they ask him where he's going. He replies, I'm going in the Baptist his English is definitely his second language. What a testimony for Christ. If you will recall, a boy named Leshem was saved last November, evidently burdened for his family afterwards. He was continually trying to get his cousins to come to church and always encouraging his mother to come as well. His mother attended faithfully with her sisters for over a year when our church first started. She had raised her hand indicating she knew she was not saved, but never came to speak with us. When her sister, who claims to be saved, fell away from church, she stopped coming as well. Some months ago, she began coming again with Lashem and their new baby, Hyacinth. In January, Sandra was able to go to her house, take her through the gospel again, and praise God through tears, she accepted Christ. Lashem wasn't done. Micah and Matthias, that's the two sons of the... Uh, uh, missionary family, uh, had the privilege of leading his cousins, Ishan and Jimwell, uh, to Christ. The Sunday morning they arrived at church, Lashem brought them directly to my wife and said, Ma'am, Sandra, I brought my cousins and they want to get saved right now. Ishan and Jimwell had attended with their mothers uh, for the same period that Lisa had initially attended. And the gospel had been taught them over and over, and God was working in their lives. 
So Micah and Matthias each took one of them aside uh, to explain the gospel plan. Both boys were very excited when they accepted Christ and have come faithfully since their salvation. The amazing thing is that these boys are the age we usually lose boys in our community. But thanks to the burden of their cousin, they're now in God's family, eagerly wanting to learn how to live for him. Lashem's prayer, as well as ours, is that his father, Nelson, will also accept Christ as Savior. We do have a personal relationship with Nelson. Their family owns one of the local grocery stores, and we try to buy most of our groceries from them as an effort to show support for their family. When Lashem was a baby, they made hard financial decisions about quitting jobs and making a life here instead of leaving Lashem to be raised by family as they both worked abroad. Our desire is to support them in this, hoping that Nelson will be able to see the hand of God in his life. A special award for one of our Sunday school children was planned to be presented during our anniversary banquet. Brian Garcia accepted the Lord and has been very faithful to church. Each Sunday morning, after mounting his little brother on his back, he walks the wandering mountain paths to the houses of his friends en route to church, picks up other kids to come to Sunday school. All of this takes him about one and a half hours. He's also coming to the age when boys in this community fall into a life of vice and away from the church. But instead, his desire to grow in his Christian life and bring others to Sunday school is growing. So we ordered a special Bible for him with his name inscribed on it, and we'll present it to him as soon as we're able to schedule, reschedule our anniversary celebration. Brian knows he'll be getting a special award, but has no idea what the award is and why he'll be receiving it. We're praying along with him that both of his unsaved parents will be able to attend this special event. We're not sure how long the lockdown will last. So far, the numbers of those infected are not going down. In fact, more and more cases are being discovered every day. The death rate, though still small on average, is increasing daily. Please pray that God will use this pandemic to turn people towards himself. Please pray for our family to be safe. Uh, so far, there are no uh, cases in our area. Hopefully, it remains that way. Thank you once again for your love and support for our family. I know you are also facing many challenges due to the pandemic. Please know that we're praying for your safety as well. May God bless you as you continue to serve him. So that's June and Sandra Malazzo and their family serving the Lord there in Segeda, the mountain province of the Philippines. Well, that's good news. Praise the Lord. Uh, encouraging to hear about folks being saved, about young men wanting to, to win others and invest their time in learning the scriptures and serving the Lord so I hope you rejoice with me. And now let's just take a moment to pray, shall we? Father, we do thank you uh, that you are a God who um, looks down from heaven and you see all the inhabitants of the earth. And every country uh, that is facing this crisis um, is um, not without your observation. And everyone is dealing with it uh, in different ways, sometimes similar ways, but sometimes different ways. And Every one of your servants is facing new challenges, and, and we just thank you, Father, that we can rest in the knowledge that uh, you will be their counselor and guide. You will be their protection and safety, their refuge, their shelter. And Father, we rejoice to hear uh, that uh, the work of God continues to go on. Uh, we're so thankful for these faithful servants uh, that are uh, serving you. We pray again for their safety, and we pray for these that are uh, new converts, that they will indeed grow in grace and uh, will be added to the church and strengthen the church in a way that glorifies your name. Father, I pray for all the members of New Testament Baptist Church tonight. I love them, and I'm privileged to be their pastor. I pray that you'll meet with us tonight around your word and, and uh, challenge us, comfort us, strengthen us, and to bless our season of prayer as we continue to lift up our voice to you on a daily basis. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, Brother Tricky's going to come and we're going to sing another song together. All right, we're going to sing What a Friend We Have in Jesus. <clears throat> I was thinking of the song while I uh, was listening to the testimony of those that were saved uh, in the Philippines. Isn't that wonderful? What a Friend We Have in Jesus. 317 in the hymn book. 
and it'll be on your screen. Sing out nice and loud with us. <clears throat> and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Oh, because we do not carry Thanks to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful? Our sorrows share. Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise, forsake thee? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou will find a soulless All right. I would invite your attention in the precious Word of God tonight to the book of Deuteronomy to begin with, the book of Deuteronomy, and chapter number 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30. If I were to title the message tonight, I would entitle it this way, He, choose, uh, he Controls... We choose. He controls. We choose. Deuteronomy chapter number 30, beginning in verse number one, the scripture says, And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among the nations whither the Lord thy God hath driven thee, and shalt return unto the Lord thy God, and shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children with all thine heart and with all thy soul, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath scattered thee. In the margin of my Bible, next to verse number one, I wrote the word consequence. And in parentheses, his control. His control. God is referring to the consequences that ultimately his people Israel would experience. And he shares with them, it's under my control. I'm telling you beforehand what will happen and when it happens, you will remember that. So I, I find the word consequence. In verse number two, or beside verse number two, I wrote the word choice. And then in parentheses, I wrote our choice or our control. So the consequence is under his control. The choice is under our control. And then next to verse number three, I wrote the word consequence again and underneath it in parentheses his 
control. So notice that the choice belongs to us and the consequences belong to God. Now I want you to go with me uh, down to verse number 11. In verse number 11, we begin reading, For this commandment which I command thee this day. So I want you to write beside that verse or note the word command. Command. This commandment which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. What God wanted his people to do was no mystery. He didn't hide it from them. He didn't uh, make them seek it or go on a scavenger hunt. He, it wasn't a, a far removed where they had to, to go on a long journey to discover uh, what God wanted for them. He said, It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, Who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it? You know, in our modern way of thinking and modern vernacular, uh, we may say uh, this way. Um, I'm waiting for God to tell me what to do. No, uh, the will of God is not in heaven. It's been revealed to us. It's here. It's near to us. And then verse number 13, neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say, who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us? that we may hear it and do it. But the word is very nigh unto thee, in thy mouth and in thy heart, that thou mayest do it. God has made plain his will for the lives of his people. He had told Israel exactly what he wanted for them to do and what he wanted them to be. Now look at verse 15. See, I have set before thee this day life and good, death and evil. Life is a consequence of doing good, and death, the consequence of doing evil. In that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. So again, in verse 16, we have the command, and then we have the consequence of obedience to that command. And again, who controls the consequence? It's God. But, verse 17, if thine heart turn away so that thou wilt not hear, but shalt be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that you shall surely perish and that you shall not prolong your days upon the land, whither thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. So, again, now I have placed in the margin of my Bible the word choice, and the choice belongs to us. We are in control of choice, God is in control of consequence. Verse 26, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, thou mayest obey his voice, that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life and length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Now turn with me, if you would, to the book of Psalms. Psalm and chapter number 115. Psalm 115. While you're turning, I challenge you again. Did you read your Bible today? I placed before you yesterday morning a challenge for the month of April uh, for 30 days to read specifically in the Word of God. Gave you several possible plans uh, of approach to reading the Scriptures. I'm pleading with you, take the time, the extra time that's in your life right now, and read uh, if you are, are still struggling with how to go about it or what plan to follow, give me a call or send me a text and I'll help you with that. 
But Psalm chapter 115. Not unto us, O Lord, and not unto us, but unto thy name give glory, for thy mercy and for thy truth's sake. Wherefore should the heathen say, Where is now their God? But our God is in the heavens. He hath done whatsoever he hath pleased. Again, in the margin of my Bible, I wrote the word control. God hath done whatsoever he hath pleased. Their idols, those that are heathen that are asking, where is our God? Their gods are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes have they, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Noses have they, but they smell not. They have hands, but they handle not. Feet have they, but they walk not. Neither speak they through their throat. They that make them are like unto them. So is everyone that trusteth in them. O Israel, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Next to those two verses, 9 and 10, I wrote, The Jew, Abraham's seed, the house of Israel, and the house of Aaron, God is your help and your shield. But then verse 11, ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and, the sh and their shield. I wrote next to that verse, Jew and Gentile, or everyone. Everyone, no matter uh, what your lineage, if you fear the Lord, he is your help and your shield. Verse 12, the Lord hath been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. So there's the Jew again. And then verse 13, he will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. That's Jew and Gentile. The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. You are blessed of the Lord, which made heaven and earth. The, er, the heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth hath he given to the children of men. The dead praise not the Lord, neither any that go down into silence. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord. Now, folks, with the remaining time that I have, let me just give you some simple thoughts. I'm trying to help you clarify in your mind how to sort out uh, what's going on and what to expect from God at any point in your life and specifically at this point of crisis in our life. Number one... We are not in control. That should be painfully obvious to us by now. We're not in control. Even the governments uh, that uh, rule us or govern us, they're not in control. God is in control. God governs the affairs of man. God is in control. He has a plan. He has a purpose. And he has the power to carry out his plan and his purpose. Regardless of any oppositions or objections from man. Whether it be a saved man or an unsaved man. God has the wisdom to know what's best. And God is working out his plan and purpose with his mighty power. And who can stay his hand? Who can say, what doest thou? No one can be opposed to him and no one can hinder his actions. God is in control. We are not. There's only one thing that you and I are in control of. And that's what we were getting at in Deuteronomy chapter 30. The only thing I can control and have control over is my choices. How am I going to react to God's plan? How am I going to react to God's purpose? How am I going to react to God's power? That's my choice. I'm in control of that. I cannot control God and I cannot control the circumstances. 
but I can control my responses and my choices. And God clearly pointed out to Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 30, look, I'm setting before you life and blessing, death and evil. He said, you have a choice. And I would say to you that just as he gave Israel a choice, he gives you and I a choice. Uh, we have the choice, uh, and I'll get to some of those choices in just a moment. But going back to the thought that God is in control, let me just give you a couple of statements that may help you visualize that. God's hand is on the steering wheel. So when you travel in a vehicle, there's only one person in control of the vehicle. At least you hope they're in control of the vehicle. But the person who is controlling the vehicle is the person whose hands are on the steering wheel, the person who is controlling or directing uh, the car. Well, God's hand is on the steering wheel in our universe, in our nation, in our family, our church, and our home. God is in control. It's his hand that's on the steering wheel. It's his finger that's moving the mouse, that's touching the touchpad, that's clicking the mouse. Whatever's happening is under his control. You know, when I, uh, I, I, uh, when I use my computer, I control the computer. I, I give it direction by moving the mouse or by clicking or, or touching the pad. And, and uh, God's finger is on the mouse, if you please. God is directing the cursor uh, on the screen. So I simply am trying to say to you and press on you that God is in control. It is such a wonderful thing when you and I finally yield to that concept and principle, when we stop believing that we're in control. Do you know if you will go back for a moment to the day you were born, how much control did you have? None. And from the day of your birth until this very day, no matter what illusions you have, have formed in your mind, you've never been in control. Somebody else has always been in control. Circumstances have controlled your life. Circumstances unexpected, sometimes pleasant, sometimes unpleasant. You have never been in control. God is in control. You just were in control of how you reacted. So when mom and dad said, uh, we have to move and uh, you're going to have to change schools, you had no choice. You weren't in control. But you were in control of your reaction. You could choose to accept it and to be happy, or you could choose to fight it and pout and resist it and be miserable. I mean, that's just one illustration. But all the way through our life, we've never been in control except of our choices, the way we react to what God is doing. Now, when I tell you that God's hand is on the steering wheel and, and his finger is on the mouse and he's directing the cursor, let me tell you about God's hand. The Bible says in the Old Testament of the nation of Israel that God had graven them on the palm of his hand and their walls were continually before him. In other words, the hand that is controlling everything, graven on that hand are his people, always before his eyes. So though you're not in control, the one who is in control is constantly aware of his people. Now, you say that's the Old Testament, that's Israel. Oh, yes. But do you remember Jesus' words in John chapter 10? He said, my father has given you to me. And no one can pluck you out of my hand. And my father, which gave you to me is greater than I, and no man is able to pluck you out of his hand. My father and I are one. So are you getting it tonight, folks? You're not in control. I'm not in control. We never have been. God is. But the hand that's on the steering wheel that's controlling and directing the events of, of man has on it engraven his chosen people, Israel, his covenant, Old Testament covenant people and his New Testament covenant people, the, the, those who received his son by faith, those who are in Christ and the hands that direct and control and govern the affairs of the universe, which are before God always, are reminding him, testifying to him of you, 
whom he loves, who he treasures. Now, for a moment, I want to, to talk about, we, we've often gone back to the Old Testament. We've looked at the Psalms, and we've looked at the Old Testament promises to Israel. And we wonder, how much of that can we claim? So, real simply, let me try tonight to help you. The nation of Israel was God's chosen people. So, we're dealing with a nation. And God established a covenant relationship with that nation. And He promised that nation... If they were obedient to his commands, under the covenant relationship, he would care for them. He would provide for them. He would protect them. The same is not true of Canada in the same sense. So we can't, as a nation in Canada, claim the promises given there except in one sense. And that is that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and God is no respecter of persons. And the Bible says that God uh, is, uh, is, has respect unto every nation that fears him. So if the nation of Canada, if the nation of Canada fears the Lord, who makes the Lord their God, then that nation will be blessed. The Bible says clearly, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he's chosen for an inheritance. So if Canada chooses God for the Lord, then Canada can expect the blessings of that choice. God will bless the nation. Israel has an unbroken covenant with God as a nation. And his blessings come to that nation or the curse comes on that nation as a consequence of the choices they make. And so our nation will suffer or will be blessed in accordance with the choices that they make. Now, in Israel, there were people who believed in God and loved God with all their heart, mind, and soul, who repented of their sin, who by faith followed God, trusted God, and served God. And those who did, those individuals, are saved by God's grace. Their nation's covenant relationship with God does not mean that everyone in that nation is going to heaven. It means that God has promised to bless that nation on earth as that nation obeys him and follows him, and the consequence will be his blessing. But in that nation, salvation is an individual matter. Each one must individually choose to love the Lord with all their heart, mind, and soul, live by faith, and receive the truth, repent of their sins, and offer sacrifice for their sin, and they would be saved. So it is in our generation. The blessing is that we have been saved by faith in Jesus Christ, the finished work of, of the cross of Calvary where Christ became the substitutionary sacrifice for our sin. And when we as individuals in this nation trust Christ as our Savior and bow before Him, we're born again, now we are His children. And we can expect the loving care of a heavenly Father over our lives, but we cannot claim God's blessing and promises upon our nation if our nation departs from God, if our nation forgets God. And so we are a part of a nation that's going to suffer. We're part of a world that's going to suffer as a consequence of their choice. God is in control, but man has a choice. I'm not going to take the time, but I will just mention these in passing. Do you know how many times we have choice in the Bible? Elijah on Mount Carmel saying to the people, If the Lord is God, serve Him. If Baal is God, serve Him. How long halt you between two opinions? You have a choice. Make your choice. In the New Testament, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, There are two gates and there are two ways. I'm counseling you to take the one gate and travel the one way rather than the other. Why? Because he tells you what's the result of going through that gate and walking on that way. Now, I'm going to close with this illustration. I'm certain that most of you are familiar with a television game show called The Price is Right. And in The Price is Right, if you're chosen 
and you come down uh, from the audience uh, uh, to the host, uh, the host will often present you with choices. He may just simply point to the stage in front of him and say, on the stage, you see there's curtain number one and curtain number two and curtain number three. And he gives you the choice of curtain one, two, or three. If somebody's already chosen curtain number one, then you may have a choice between curtain two and curtain three. Now, the difficulty is this. You have no idea what is behind the curtain. It's your choice, and the consequence of your choice is totally based on chance. You might get zonked. You might get some really dumb, useless thing, or you may win something worth thousands of dollars, win a trip or a new house furnishings or even a new car. It might be that he will say, I'm going to give you a choice. Um, I'm, I'm going to give you this envelope and open the envelope and you open the envelope and there's $1,000. He said, now you can keep the $1,000 or you can trade it for curtain number one or this small box over here on this table. And you have to make a choice. You know, when you're weighing it out, what, 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 what could be in the small box? And $1,000, I got $1,000 in hand. Maybe I should keep that or, you know, and so you have to make a choice. But listen, your choice could end up being very disappointing because it's totally chance. Are you with me? God never does that. God is totally in control. He allows you to be in control of your choice. But he always tells you what the choice is going to result in. He says, you can choose curtain number one or curtain number two. You can choose gate number one, which is a narrow gate, or gate number two, which is a broad gate. You can choose uh, way number one, which is a straight, constricted way, or you can choose uh, way number two, which is a broad way. But I'm going to tell you, if you choose the straight gate and the narrow way, it leads to life. If you choose to go through the broad gate, uh, the wide gate and the broad and travel the Broadway, the end is destruction. Isn't that wonderful? The God who controls all things says, I'm going to let you control your choice and I'm going to tell you the consequence of your choice. And that's what he was doing with Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 30. He said, I've set before you, told you exactly what will happen if you obey me. I haven't hidden my will from you. It's right plain. You know it. Here's the commandment. If you choose to obey it, here's what you get. Here's the consequence. Wonderful, blessed consequence. If you choose to disobey and disregard or be distracted by the things of this world and forsake me, then this is how it's going to end. This is the result of your choice. So church, tonight, let's stop resisting. God's control. Let's recognize the truth. We've never, ever been in control, even when we thought we were. Our gracious God has been in control of every detail of our lives. But our names or our very persons are in his hands as he controls the universe and controls our events. He cares. The only thing you can control is your choice. How are you going to choose to react to this crisis? How are you going to choose to react to the fear mongering? How are you going to choose to react to the restrictions right now in your life under God's control? Uh, you and I have a choice, and the choice will have a consequence. I encourage you to choose wisely. God always says, if you choose this way, I'm going to show you the way. You don't have to wait for a letter from heaven. You don't have to send somebody over the sea to figure it out. It's right in front of you. If you choose this, you're going to be blessed and you're going to rejoice in your choice. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I pray you'll bless your people tonight as we ponder the truths that are evident from these passages of scripture. And Father, forgive us for struggling uh, so uh, much with this question, uh, for, for wanting to be in control uh, to try uh, for trying to wrest control of the, or trying to dictate uh, to you what you should do uh, for us. Father, help us in our prayer time and in our life just to be submissive, to be thankful, to acknowledge your wisdom and your goodness and your grace, and to express our total confidence and trust in you in the midst of our circumstances. Help us to make the right choice 
Father, bless every mom, dad, boy, and girl listening to the message tonight and uh, help us to uh, remember uh, that if we make the right choice, we will rejoice uh, and we'll be blessed. I pray in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. All right, thank you so much for listening to the uh, preaching of God's Word. I believe that uh, if you are at home, you probably have received, or hopefully you've received, a prayer sheet uh, by means of email and uh, are aware of the prayer requests that are before the church. We have a, a great host of folks that are on our list that we're praying for regarding their salvation, many family members and friends, neighbors, uh, other acquaintances. And then under miscellaneous, we have several folks we're praying for on various reasons. You'll notice at the bottom of that list, a new uh, one uh, mentioning um, uh, Sheila's uh, dad, George Roberts, who is traveling up from Florida and praying for him in safety, praying for Roger Boyd and the men's street ministry. I noticed today that they're um, uh, practicing a little more social distancing, no more hot food, uh, personal contact preparation. They're putting things together, putting them in boxes and and bins and setting it out for the people to come and get and so forth. So a lot of changes there. Continue to pray for him and his team and uh, for God's wisdom and blessing and protection on them as they're out there ministering. Um, also under health, uh, we're praying for a number of folks there uh, for various specific reasons. Um, we mentioned this morning that Phil and Susan Smith with Claim Ministry, who were going to be a part of our church service this Sunday and may still be, uh, depending on what the Lord does, but uh, he's been very, very sick and has actually gone online and taken the test to determine if perhaps the symptoms are indicating COVID-19, but he's not had any results and remains um, uh, uh, with a very serious cough and some other issues. And so uh, pray for Phil and Susan. They're at home right now, unless it changed today. I haven't heard from them today. So let's pray for them, lift them up before the Lord. And then missionary Danny Jones and his family, uh, missionary to Thailand. He has three little girls and, um, and uh, they've been, uh, uh, he's fighting COVID-19 and the family has been tested, awaiting the results. And let's just pray for them. Continue to pray for George and Colleen Johnson and their girls, Elisa and Joy and God, God's mercy and grace uh, to them. And then, um, um, uh, Mrs. Bomberry uh, or Mrs. Norsworthy, uh, Tanya, uh, North, uh, Tanya Norsworthy, sorry about that, has um, mentioned uh, she'd like us to pray for uh, some family members of hers, Tim, Tyson, Tiana, Robin, and M Mia. Uh, pray for them as well. The Lord's uh, working in their lives uh, and His grace. Uh, many others that are listed here. Um, I also was talking to... Uh, Harry Mancini today, and uh, he was telling me about the huge family that he has and the number of cousins and so forth, but God has been merciful, um, uh, except in one case, and he mentioned uh, a first cousin by the name of Leonard uh, Gibbons. He goes by Lenny Gibbons, and he is uh, very, very ill with COVID-19 and uh, is in an induced a coma, and his kidneys are you know, failing. They're not sure he's going to make it. And uh, he mentioned that to me today. So I said, I'd mention it to you if you'd pray for Leonard Gibbons and God's uh, gracious intervention in his life. I know uh, that Harry would appreciate that very much. All right. So those are the requests that I have. Uh, we didn't uh, note it here, but continue to pray if you would. Um, often and always for the unreached peoples of the world. We don't have anybody specifically listed on our list tonight, but there are many people that don't have a Bible in their language, don't have a church. And during a crisis like this, uh, perhaps um, the Lord will enable them to find a radio broadcast or some kind of internet access uh, uh, that uh, somebody is uh, trying to reach out to them. But let's just pray that God will continue to work in the hearts and lives of people to surrender uh, to the mission field. This is our missions month, and uh, we are going to be uh, emphasizing that. And let's continue to pray for God to raise up laborers for the field. Jesus told us to do so, didn't he? said, pray you the Lord of the harvest, it'll send forth labors into the harvest. All right, well, again, I thank you for joining us tonight. I trust that the service has been helpful to you and challenging to you as well. Uh, we look forward to uh, being with you again tomorrow morning at 10, again on Friday and Saturday, uh, and we'll be telling you more about what's coming up for the weekend. And uh, let's look to the Lord in prayer as we close tonight, shall we? 
What a blessed people we are, Father, to have been given your revealed will in a book that we can carry with us wherever we go, that we can hide in our hearts. Thank you that, as you said to your people Israel, there is no mistaking. You've made very plain and clear. You've not hidden from us your will, nor the way of blessing, the way of peace, the way of happiness, the way of joy. Thank you so much that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Thank you for the testimony of your servant who said, Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and they were unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. I pray that this month, the month of April, uh, we would all redouble our efforts, commit ourselves to reading your word, to familiarizing ourselves with the pathway you've set before us, because you've given us total control over our choices. And Father, we can't make the right choice unless we allow you to show us uh, the choice and the consequences of those choices. So bless your people as we read your word together. Father, keep us, be with us until we meet again. All of these things we've mentioned tonight, we lift up to you, faith believing that you can do all things. Nothing is too hard for you. And you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we would ask or even think. And we rejoice in that truth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, God bless you. Good night. And we'll see you again soon.